I'm out here at the ridge today and here's my dilemma. Since I've owned this property, I've never had a proper gate to restrict access to the front field. So what I've done over the years is stack up some old skids in a pyramid type structure and then run a heavy gauge wire through those skids and locked it between two T-posts. And it's worked pretty well. Now I'm finally ready to install a proper gate. But the problem is, is the land here is basically bedrock. It's almost impossible to drill into this soil unless you've got some heavy machinery, which I don't have access to. So I'm going to show you exactly how I'm going to solve this problem. Since I need to create freestanding posts that are going to be able to support the weight of two 10-foot gates, I'm going to create some gabion cages. So what I did is I went out and I found some 16 by 4 foot sheep slash goat pen panels. This is 4 gauge wire here and this set me back about $59. I'm going to go ahead and cut this into two pieces and therefore I'm going to be able to get both cages out of this one panel. And to complete this project I also bought one 8 foot by 6 inch round ground contact grade post that I'm going to cut into two posts, four foot each, that set me back about another $16. You'll see that later in the video. Right now, we got to get to cutting. And this is what I'm going to use. With the panel cut in half, I now have two eight foot, roughly, by four foot panels. And I want the rough edge like this on both of them. So I'm going to have to go ahead and cut this other edge off the other panel so I've got that good rough edge to work with. You'll see why in a minute. No home construction video is complete without the obligatory spark footage. So there you go. I'll move on. I had this skateboard grind box laying around which just happened to work out as the perfect jig for bending this wire. I kind of just stand on it, pull it, and then uh, pound it into place with the sledge there. Little taxing, but it works. And after a couple minutes, you can see it actually begins to take shape. Now, here's the reason that I left this rough edge on both of these cages. When I bend them together, I'm now going to be able to use that rough edge to actually seam the cage into one piece. And I'll be using the same quality steel the whole way around. I won't be adding like hog rings or anything like that. I'll actually be using this same 4 gauge wire to seal up the cage. And I'll show you how I do that. To bend this wire, I take a small piece of pipe, slide it over the wire, and then just kind of press it into place. It helps to have a piece of pipe that's actually small enough to fit through the uh, little openings in the fence. Or else you kind of got to fumble with it a little bit and readjust it and get the pipe on the correct side of the fence or wire cage to get it to go through and finally bend. I'm making this look a lot harder than it actually is. But I kind of wanted to show this to you in real time. So there you go. And you just go ahead and continue on down the line until the cage is all one piece. I continue to bend and twist that wire until I've got a nice, even seam, preferably with all the points pointing inside of the cage. And now I've got one cage complete. And you can see how all that wire is going to hold the cage into one solid piece and maintain the integrity because I use the same gauge wire all the way down. Now I'll just duplicate the process for the second cage. As a final warning, messing with this type of wire is dangerous. Try not to cut yourself like I did. Let's go ahead and get back to the ridge. Now we're back at the entrance to the front field at the ridge, and here's those skids I was kind of telling you about. There's one there, and then there's one over here. I kind of took out the ones in the middle. And they're just leaning up against those T-posts right now that has the... Uh, high gauge wire attached to it. Let's go ahead and get these out of the way and I can get these gabion cages into place. And as you can see I got the gabion cage in place. 
I basically just slipped it over that old T-post. That way I still have access to the ring there where I can uh, lock the cable, which I'm still going to use in addition to the gate. And you can see where I dropped that four foot post right here in the corner of the cage. We'll go ahead and switch over to the other side here and I'll show you the other one is in place as well. There's the cable I'm still going to be using. There's the other T-post. I'm actually going to adjust this cage a little bit on this side so that that post is in the far back corner so that my entrance is exactly 16 feet from new post to new post. It'll all make sense here in a couple minutes. Anyhow, to keep the post from leaning inside the cage until I get them filled up with rocks, I'm going to need to wire them in place. So let's grab the bailing wire. So you can see here how I just went ahead and used a little bit of bailing wire. Actually, this is trapping wire. Used a little bit of wire, wired it into place so that it's going to be standing up so that when I fill it up with rocks, I'm not going to have to worry about it falling all over the place. But that's it. That's all I got to do. Now, I just got to go down to the creek and get some rocks. Filling these up with rocks was way harder than I expected. Very backbreaking work when you're doing this by yourself. But after about an hour or so, I got it done. And this is the final result. And to be quite honest with you, I'm extremely happy with the way these turned out. These things are solid. I would say rock solid, but I'll spare you the pun. You can see that the cable still runs through this uh, gabion cage on this side. Very nice. Very stable. And with this setup, I'll be able to mount the hardware for the gate right into the post. Very easy access. Here's the gabion cage on the other side. Same thing. It's basically just rinse and repeat. And you can see that I still have access to my T-post here on the edge of this one with the locking ring for my cable which I'll probably just weave through the new gate and I'll mount the gate to this post on this side. But that's going to be a video for another time. So that's it. Those are my gabion cages for my freestanding gate posts. They're going to be plenty sturdy. The gates that I'll be hanging are approximately 37 pounds each and these cages can withstand that weight on the angle of the gate, no problem whatsoever. These things are ridiculously heavy at this point. So anyway, hey, thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me today. Uh, you know I'd appreciate that thumbs up like. Feel free to check us out on Instagram and maybe, just maybe, I'll see you on the next video. If you enjoy videos about the randomness of our amazing world, consider clicking on the globe to subscribe or maybe checking out one of the other videos right here.